Up to the age of 26, Ignatius of Loyola was a man given to the vanities of the world, and what he enjoyed most was warlike sport with a great and foolish desire to win fame. And so, whilst in a fortress that the French were attacking, when all were of the view that they should surrender with their lives safeguarded, where they saw clearly that they could not offer resistance, Loyola gave so many reasons to the commander that he actually persuaded him to resist, even against the view of all the officers, who drew courage from his spirit and determination. When the day came on which the bombardment was expected, he confessed to one of these companions in arms. And after the bombardment had lasted a good while, a shot struck him on one leg, shattering it completely. And as the cannonball passed between both legs, the other was also badly injured. Welcome to this prayer on the occasion of the 500th anniversary of St. Ignatius of Loyola's conversion. We are happy you could join us to prayerfully remember this moment that fundamentally changed the course of Ignatius's life and had a big impact on our world. It allowed Ignatius to see that the dreams he had for his life were actually much smaller than the dream God had for him. It is a joy to be able to unite with the Ignatian family all over the world. Let's welcome one another here and enter into this prayer with generosity toward God and each other. Let us start our prayer becoming aware of the presence of the Lord. And let us pray in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, give us the grace that all our intentions and actions may be ordered purely to your service and to your greater praise and glory. Me encuentro en Roma, en la Iglesia del Jesu, ante la At the tomb of Saint Ignatius. I'm happy to join you, Jesuit brothers, 
scholastics, priests, novices, valued members of the Ignatian family, and all our friends. From this place where Ignatius' earthly pilgrimage ended, while we are celebrating 500 years of this wound that was inflicted on Ignatius in Pamplona, it's good to remind ourselves that this was not so much a happy ending, but rather a happy beginning. Conversion consists sometimes of great moments of change, but it is also a never-ending process. I invite you to take a moment to imagine this pilgrimage that Ignatius undertook from Pamplona to here. Ignatius' conversion was gradual. He set out trying to imitate St. Francis and St. Dominic. He wanted to be better and holier than them. He was still very impulsive and stubborn, but God would work with that and slowly and patiently transform him. God met Ignatius where he was in his life and gently accompanied him on his pilgrimage. Ignatius learned on his way that conversion means to be available and open to God, to be trusting, laying his life completely into God's hands. His plans changed so often. This asked for a continual discernment and a continual conversion. He had to decenter every time in order to put Christ in the center again. The same thing happened with the foundation of the Society of Jesus. Things didn't go smoothly like in some sort of a business plan. Rather, it was a continual listening to the Spirit and a daily conversion not putting the focus on the society as an institution, but on Christ as head of that institution. Ignatius' story is 500 years old, but also 500 years new. Today, the Society of Jesus, the Church and all of us are in need of continual conversion. We need to put Christ in the center every time, again and again. This process is a pilgrimage along winding roads, up and down, sometimes having to retrace our steps, sometimes feeling lost. But meeting people along the road who indicate the way and reach out their hands to us. May this year be an opportunity to be more open to the voice of the Spirit which so often speaks through other fellow human beings. May we welcome the conversion God wants for us instead of trying to force our own conversion. May we have the patience and the determination to put obstacles and distractions to one side and welcome the newness of the gift of our always unpredictable God. Let us divest ourselves ever more of self-love, self-will and self-interests so as to make progress on this pilgrimage we humbly take together. We ask God that he may help us to truly see all things new in Christ.
Let us become aware of God's presence and ask what we want and desire. Lord, grant that we may be touched by the example of St. Ignatius to follow you more nearly. Help us to turn ourselves every day and ever more towards you, so that we can see all things new in you. After his painful experience in Pamplona, St. Ignatius gradually learned to see all things new in Christ and to follow the Spirit. The wound put Ignatius on a road where he would meet many people and leave many experiences that would help him to become a contemplative in action and to find God in all things. We asked various members of the Ignatian family where they find Christ personally, who or what helps them to find Christ. Have a listen to their answers and let's meditate on their words. How do I meet Jesus personally in my life? First, through the scriptures, especially through the Gospels, where I meet Jesus in flesh and blood. Second, through the sacraments, in a special way through the Eucharist. Third, my personal prayer. Fourth, through the community, when they are gathered together. But more specifically through the broken people, the poor, the marginalized. And especially today, when I'm working for JRS, and through my refugee brothers and sisters. Een concreet voorbeeld van in ons gezin is het avondritueel wanneer ik mijn dochter in bed leg. Ik merk dan vaak hoe ze zich tegen mij aanlesselt terwijl ze haar flesje drinkt in de donkere kamer. Dat moment van samen zijn wordt voor mij ook een moment van gebed, van verbondenheid met God en met het gezin. Van mijn kant um, herken ik God in de onvoorwaardelijke liefde die ik van lieve voel. Zeker op momenten dat ik mezelf minder graag kan zien dan een lief woord mogen horen, of een attentie, of een spontane hulp die je mij aanbiedt, zijn voor mij momenten waarin Gods, um, Gods liefde eigenlijk doorschemert. The impact St. Ignatius had on the Church and the world is something he could never have imagined. But God wanted to use him as an instrument so he could help souls. His personality is very rich and he was so very human. Let's listen to some people sharing what touches them most about St. Ignatius. It can spark in you what impact Ignatius has had on your life.
What moves me most about St. Ignatius is how, in the end, he just relishes the presence of God in his life, which is such a different way of being from his willful way of having his small plans of glory and romance, bravery and chivalry, and even how he started uh, trying to follow in the footsteps of St. Dominic and St. Francis and to kind of outdo them. It's this continuous disruption of his small plans, the real struggle, the failure, this time of crisis that has so much to teach us now, I think, in this moment of pandemic. God wanted to live in him in bigger ways, and this could only open with that real struggle. We can learn so much from him, uh, how God used it all and how he relished it too. Al final de la vida llegaremos con la herida convertida en cicatriz. Life will tempt us to count the cost of loving Winding paths taking their toll within us As we stumble once again over the same stone Despairing that we ever will walk freely Toutefois nous sommes les enfants du Dieu de l'amour De vrais chercheurs assoiffés de réponses En nous tu as semé tes plus grands espoirs Afin que ton royaume puisse fleurir À la fin de la vie nous arrivons Avec nos blessures devenues cicatrices In ourselves we will wage a conflict mortal Ranks of time will surround pressing upon us While our hearts carry scars of every battle and rejoicing and music seem a lost dream Y con todo seguiremos bailando Porque así somos humanos en tu estela Portadores de un fuego inextinguible Creyentes en un mundo sin fronteras Al final de la vida llegaremos Con la herida convertida en cicatriz Oui, nous sommes fragiles mais passionnés Des rêves qui ne se découragent pas Non, jamais nous ne renoncerons au matin Même si la tempête nous assaille Y si acaso se agrietan los motivos Por los que un día elegimos tu bandera Even in our weakness we shall walk beside you Because your good news is life to every nation At the end of our days we will abide With your love and grace to heal our every wound. During this Ignatian year, we are celebrating 500 years of the conversion of St. Ignatius. But conversion is not only about the past. 
It is also about newness. It is about the present and the future. Let's then take a moment together, reflect on what you are asking the Lord for this Ignatian year. What are you asking for yourself, for your family and friends, for your community and the Ignatian family, or for the church and the world? Year of Ignatius to each and all a yao chin sigai, a piat ki nete mu yashi bi, a to repeat the COVID nineteen job, John Green Yaro, say, Wayne Ikuda mu yashi bi, a general yao chin sigai, a piat ki tinsu api, boa deta, piao le bi, a lu a mia jug, a piat ki a jug, general a gown so addition, neta duanaya, sudoma yabadi. año en que nosotros recordamos estos 500 años de su conversión, me encantaría ¿eh? y le pido que sea un año muy fecundo en conversiones y que nosotros que vibramos y vivimos en su espiritualidad podamos vivir una constante conversión para que seamos capaces también de ayudar a otros a vivir en conversión, a vivir en ordenamiento, en una vuelta continua y constante a su Señor. Espero que todos los eventos festivos, celebrativos, de formación, sean realmente para que nos construyamos como persona y podamos realmente construir un mundo nuevo, un mundo que sea fraterno, un mundo donde reine la justicia y la paz. Allow me to pray out loud what occurs to me. Lord, I bring you our hopes for this year. I bring you my hopes for my life and for my future. Be with me on this journey. Reach out to me when I am in darkness. Help me take your hand with humility. I need your help. Give me a real joy in my heart. Let me never stop searching, longing and loving. Give me the courage of Saint Ignatius and his wisdom in discerning. Give me the creativity of so many other Ignatian founders who saw the needs and who did not hesitate. Help me to know and love your son Jesus more and more. We pray in his name. Amen. The conversion of Ignatius was a long and winding path which never finished. But on the path of conversion there were several more significant moments. At Manresa he had a great insight which would be decisive for the next steps in his pilgrimage. We now go to Manresa with a view of Montserrat. This was the view Saint Ignatius saw so many times.
As he walked along the river, his mind occupied with his devotions, he sat down for a brief moment with his face towards the river, softly running down below. While he was seated, the eyes of his understanding began to open. He didn't see visions, but rather he received understanding, learning, clarity in matters of faith and of scholarship. And this with so great an enlightenment that everything seemed new to him. Let's take a moment to speak with Jesus as a friend speaks to another, or as a servant speaks to one in authority. I speak to him, giving thanks for this moment of prayer and all his blessings. And I ask him for what I want, according to what I feel in my heart, so that I may better follow and imitate our Lord, poor and humble, and see myself, other people, and all things new in him. At the end of this prayer, let us spend some time with Mary, our mother. Our Lady of the Way was very important to Saint Ignatius and his companions. And also for us now, as we set out on this pilgrimage of the Ignatian year. Let us pray that she may guide us tenderly and patiently on this complex and difficult road of conversion. And let us pray together to Mary in our own languages. Dios te salve, Maria, llena eres de gracia. At the end of this prayer, we are privileged to be joined by the Holy Father who will give us a blessing. Queridos amigos, me alegra unirme a ustedes en esta oración por el año ignaciano la celebración de la conversión de San Ignacio. Espero que todos los que se inspiran en Ignacio y en la espiritualidad ignaciana puedan vivir realmente este año como una experiencia de conversión. En Pamplona, hace 500 años, todos los sueños mundanos de Ignacio se hicieron añicos en un momento. La bala de cañón que le hirió cambió el curso de su vida 
y el curso del mundo. Las cosas aparentemente pequeñas pueden ser importantes. Esa bala de cañón también significó que Ignacio fracasó en los sueños que él tenía para su vida. Pero Dios tenía un sueño más grande para él. El sueño de Dios para Ignacio no se centraba en Ignacio. Se trataba de ayudar a las almas. Era un sueño de redención, un sueño de salir al mundo entero, acompañado de Jesús, humilde y pobre. La conversión es un asunto cotidiano. Rara vez es de una vez por todas. La conversión de Ignacio comenzó en Pamplona, pero no terminó ahí. Durante toda su vida se convirtió, día a día. ¿Y esto qué significa? Que durante toda su vida puso a Cristo en el centro. Y lo hizo a través del discernimiento. El discernimiento no consiste en acertar siempre desde el principio, sino en navegar, en tener una brújula para poder emprender el camino que tiene muchas curvas y vueltas pero dejarse guiar siempre por el Espíritu Santo que nos va conduciendo al encuentro con el Señor. En esta peregrinación por la tierra nos encontramos con otros, como lo hizo Ignacio en su vida. Esos otros son señales que nos ayudan a mantener el rumbo y que nos invitan a convertirnos cada vez de nuevo. Son hermanos, son situaciones. Y Dios nos habla también a través de ellos. Escuchemos a los demás. Leamos las situaciones. Seamos postes indicadores para los demás, también nosotros mostrando el camino de Dios. La conversión se hace siempre en diálogo. En diálogo con Dios, en diálogo con los demás en diálogo con el mundo. Rezo para que todos los que se inspiran en la espiritualidad ignaciana puedan hacer este viaje juntos como una familia ignaciana. Y rezo para que muchos otros lleguen a descubrir la riqueza de esta espiritualidad que Dios dio a Ignacio. Los bendigo de corazón para que este año sea realmente una inspiración para ir al mundo, ayudar a las almas, viendo todas las cosas nuevas en Cristo. Y también una inspiración para dejarnos ayudar. Ninguno se salva solo. O nos salvamos en comunidad, o no nos salvamos. Ninguno le enseña al otro el camino. Solo Jesús nos enseñó el camino. Nosotros nos ayudamos a encontrar y a seguir este camino mutuamente. Y los bendiga Dios Todopoderoso, el Padre y el Hijo y el Espíritu Santo. Amén. Thank you, Pope Francis. We assure you of our prayers for you. And with these beautiful words of Pope Francis, we have come to the end of this prayer period. I want to thank you all for taking part. This is such a special moment of prayerful unity of the Ignatian family. We thank God for bringing us here together. Just as the cannonball in Pamplona is not the end of the road for Ignatius, so also this special event is just the beginning. We invite you to live this Ignatian year open to the conversion God wants for you and for us all and ready to see all things new in Christ, ready to be surprised, consoled, renewed. Thank you for having been with us at Maiorum Dei Gloriam. Peuple célébrer le Seigneur. Tous les peuples.
peuple chanter sa louange. Cherchez Dieu et trouvez-le en toutes choses. Cherchez Dieu et servez-le parmi vos frères. Partez loin et franchissez toutes frontières. Partez loin et demeurez dans la prière. Avancez avec la force des fragiles. Avancez sur le chemin de l'évangile. Partagez la joie de croire et de vivre. Partagez la vérité qui nous rend libre. Agissez et contemplez l'œuvre de Dieu. Agissez avec l'ardeur des bienheureux. Choisissez d'aimer les pauvres et les petits. Choisissez d'ouvrir vos cœurs à l'infini. Des compagnons, devenez des artisans de communion, proclamez les merveilles du Seigneur, proclamez ses appels. Soyez toujours joyeux. Amen.